there is an incredible underground city lost, located below the pyramids of Giza, and despite the fact that only a few know it today, it was extremely well documented in the past. The mysterious plateau of Giza, is even more amazing once you realize that the ancient city of Memphis, Giza, is full of underground passages, wells, a system of caverns and chambers that are supported on its walls, thousands of years of history together with innumerable artifacts. However, the Egyptian authorities are not willing to reveal what lies under Giza to the general public, like many other discoveries made over the years in Egypt. There is a lost history completely ignored by scholars of the mainstream, when it comes to the civilization of ancient Egypt and the enigmatic pyramids that, according to many, predate the Egyptian civilization itself. To fully understand the partial parts of history that we have been taught in school, we must understand that innumerable discoveries on our planet have been completely ignored by mainstream scholars. One such discovery took place in Egypt, where a system of underground tunnels with chambers and rooms below the surface of the pyramidal plateau was discovered. A genuine history of what happened under the sands, thousands of years ago, is not present in the general teachings of our past civilizations, and the reflection of that, are the innumerable discoveries made in recent decades that clearly indicate the history as we know it, it is only partial. To understand the enigmatic underground city located beneath the Giza Plateau, we ventured out of the Fayum Oasis district, located a few miles outside of Memphis. It is worth mentioning that in the past, Lake Mores, bordered the Oasis Fayum and right on its shores was the enigmatic labyrinth described by Herodotus, as an endless wonder to me. It is said that the mysterious labyrinth is of an impressive size, contained up to 1,500 rooms and an equal amount of underground chambers, which the Greek philosopher did not have permission to inspect. According to the guardians of the labyrinth, the passages were baffling and intricate, created in order to keep the innumerable ancient texts and parchments secure in the many underground chambers. For the magicians. In fact, this ancient complex impressed Herodotus in such a way that he felt compelled to speak about the mysterious structure. There I saw twelve palaces regularly arranged, which had communication between them, interspersed with terraces and arranged around twelve rooms. It is hard to believe that they are the work of man, the walls are covered with carved figures, and each patio is exquisitely constructed of white marble and surrounded by columns. Near the corner where the labyrinth ends, there is a pyramid, 240 feet high, with large carved figures of animals and an underground passage through which you can enter. I was credibly told that the underground chambers and passages connected this pyramid with the pyramids of Memphis, Giza. In fact, the old Memphis, Giza, has a gigantic underground system that combines a set of intricate artificial passages, rivers, and underground tunnels. Although these were described thousands of years ago, the gigantic underground cavities were mapped since 1978, using a ground-penetrating radar thanks to explorations directed by Dr. Jim Hurtake, who is said to have entered the chambers that are larger than the largest cathedrals ever built by modern man. However, in addition to the above, he also spoke of the gigantic underground metropolis located below the Giza Plateau, which is said to be at least 15,000 years old. Interestingly, there are numerous ancient authors who supported Herodotus' record of underground passages connecting the main pyramids. It is important to mention that Iamblichus, also known as Iamblichus Chalcedensis, or Iamblich of Apamea, a Syrian Neoplatonist philosopher, who recorded information about an entrance through the body of the Sphinx that leads into the Great Pyramid of Giza. This entrance, obstructed in our days by sand and garbage, can still be traced between the front legs of the Sphinx. Formerly it was closed by a bronze door, whose secret source could only be operated by the Magi. He was protected from the public, and a kind of religious fear maintained his inviolability, better than armed protection would have done. In the belly of the Sphinx the galleries that lead to the underground part of the Great Pyramid were cut. These galleries intersected so ingeniously along their course to the pyramid, that when entering the passage without a guide along this network, it inevitably returned to the starting point. Krantor, 300 BC, 
claimed that a set of underground pillars in Egypt contain written records of stones from prehistory, Cranter also supported the writings of Herodotus. Even more interesting, however, is the fact that in the ancient Sumerian cylinder seals, the records of the Anunnaki and their secret abode are written, described how, an underground place, its entrance hidden by the sand and by what they call Huwana, its teeth like the teeth of a dragon, and its face, the face of a lion. These extremely ancient texts, fragmented into several pieces, also record that, he Huwana, cannot advance, nor can he retreat, but they crawled towards him from behind, and the road to the secret abode of the Anunnaki, it was not blocked anymore. Ancient Sumerian texts surprisingly provided a relatively good description of the lion-headed sphinx, a monument that presumably predates the civilizations of ancient Egypt, and was established to protect the pyramids and the innumerable chambers and tunnels beneath Giza. However, we found more evidence of large underground chambers in the writings of the Roman historian Pliny of the first century, who documented that beneath the powerful sphinx, there is a tomb of a ruler named Harmachis, which contains a great treasure. Surprisingly, the Great Sphinx was once called, the Great Sphinx Harmachis, who stood guard from the time of the followers of Horus. The 4th century Roman historian, Ammianus Marcel Linus, documented the existence of passageways leading into the Great Pyramid at Giza. Inscriptions that the ancients affirmed were engraved on the walls of certain subterranean galleries, and that the passages were built deep within the dark interior, to preserve the ancient wisdom, to be lost in the Great Flood. More evidence is found in a manuscript documented by the Arabic writer Al-Glamsani, and preserved in the British Museum. Al-Glamsani, documented the existence of an extensive underground chamber located underground, between the Great Pyramid and the Nile River. Al-Glamsani wrote that there was something huge blocking the entrance from the Nile River. Al-Glamsani wrote, in the time of Ahmed ben Talaun, a group entered the Great Pyramid through the tunnel, and found in a side chamber, a cup of a very rare color and texture. When they left, they saw that one of the, the guests, and when they returned to look for him, he approached them naked, and laughing, said, Do not follow me or look for me, and then they hurried back to the pyramid, their friends perceived that the place was enchanted. Upon learning of the strange events beneath the pyramid, Ahmed ben Tulaun expressed his desire to see the glass goblet. During the examination of the chalice, it was filled with water and weighed, then emptied, and reweighed. Then, the historian wrote that it was discovered that it had the same weight when it was empty, that when it was full of water. Curiously, during the 10th century, a writer named Masudai, claimed that the underground galleries located under the Great Pyramid of Giza, were guardian mechanical statues. His description, a thousand years ago, can be compared to the computerized robots that are seen today. According to Masudai, these robots were programmed to destroy everyone, except those who by their conduct were worthy of being admitted. He wrote, Written narrations of wisdom and acquisitions in the different arts and sciences, were deeply hidden, which could remain as records for the benefit of those who could later understand them. Masudai confessed, I have seen things that one does not describe for fear of making people doubt intelligence, but I have still seen them. According to Herodotus, the ancient Egyptian priests spoke of a long tradition of the creation of underground chambers, by the original builders of ancient Memphis. Interestingly, these stories were confirmed when large cavities were discovered during a survey conducted in Giza in 1993. The reports that support the existence of large cameras were documented by a newspaper report called Mystery Tunnel in Sphinx, the workers who repair the Sphinx have discovered an ancient passage that leads into the mysterious monument. The head of antiquities in Giza, Mr. Zahi Hawass, said there was no doubt that the tunnel was very old. However, the disconcerting thing is, who built the passage? And why? Besides, where does it lead? Mr. Hawa said he had no plans to remove the stones that blocked the entrance. It enters the north side of the Sphinx, halfway between the extended legs of the Sphinx and its tail. In 1935, incredible stories emerged after a decade-long cleanup project was carried out. 
An article published the same year, by Hamilton M. Wright, described the existence of the areas under Giza. This information, like many other discoveries, is still denied by the Egyptian authorities despite the ample evidence proving its existence. The article read, We have discovered a tunnel used by the ancient Egyptians 5,000 years ago, passing under the road that leads between the second pyramid and the Sphinx. The tunnel passes under the roadway of the Pyramid of Cheops, to the Pyramid of Kephren from this tunnel, we have unearthed a series of wells that lead to courtyards and side chambers. The existence of the vast underground chambers of Giza is well documented, even though some people around the world know of its existence. Reports from the media in the 1930s, describe underground chambers and passageways, located between the Temple of the Men, Solar, located on the plateau and the Temple of the Sphinx, in the Valley of Giza. Located in the middle between the Great Sphinx and the Great Pyramid, four huge vertical axes, each of approximately eight square feet, were also discovered, leading to the inner chambers through solid limestone facetiso. It is called Camel's Tomb, in the Masonic and Rosicrucian Plains, said Dr. Salim Hassan, it ended in a spacious room, in the center of which was another well that descended into a spacious courtyard flanked by seven side cameras. According to reports, inside the secret rooms, there were huge sealed sarcophagi of basalt and granite, about 18 feet high. In 1935, when Dr. Salim Hassan was exploring the area, he wrote, we hope to find some important monuments after cleaning this water. The total depth of the series of wells is 125 feet. In the course of cleaning the southern part of the pass, a very fine head was found. A statue that is very expressive in every detail of the face. In addition to the above, Dr. Salim Hassan also reported on the discovery of three interior and exterior courtyards, and a room that they called the Chapel of Offerings cut into a massive rocky outcrop, found between the tomb of Campbell and the Great Pyramid. Reports indicate that in the center of the chapel, there are three vertical ornamental pillars, placed in a triangular design. The pillars are extremely important points, however, despite extensive ancient texts documenting the existence of vast tunnels, chambers and passages beneath Giza, the Egyptian authorities have long denied their existence along with other incredible discoveries in Egypt. According to reports, the now underground inaccessible city can be accessed from inside the Sphinx,